Hey everyone, I'm Steph from Amplify and today I'm speaking with Callum from Semantics. Woo Hello, hey. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, Callum. Thanks for having me. Stoked to be here. Thank you, Steph. Yeah. Um, so you you guys have a new album coming out tomorrow, is that correct? Friday, yeah. So tomorrow, yeah, yeah, ish. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It, but it's here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's called I feel it all at once, and you've already released a few singles. Um, what's the reception been so far with fans? It's been awesome. Um, I, th I think fans have kind of heard, um, you know, a sense of kind of familiarity with the singles, and we've kind of chosen to put out songs that feel um, pretty in align with, you know, our back catalogue. Um, so that's that's been a good response. But, yeah, there'll be a few surprises for people as well that know us pretty well. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, looking at the album art, it's pretty cool. It's got like a red mystic kind of background with a night. Um, and it kind of reminds me of a little bit of like 80s video games. Can you tell us a little bit about what inspired the album art? Yeah, the inspiration of the album art was pretty much exactly that, like that 80s high fantasy um, oil painter style. So um, you know, we wanted to go the whole hog with it and we commissioned a painter, Donato Giancola from Brooklyn, and he does paintings for, you know, D&D, &D, Magic the Gathering, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, all that kind of stuff. So proper fantasy nerd like us and um, give it that like really kind of bat out of hell, like holy diver, you know, um, Ozzy Osbourne kind of vibe with a really, really, really wicked painting and just um, let it be a, a contrast with the music as well. Because obviously it looks so metal and, and the album's not metal, but, you know, maybe it'll grab your attention and, you know, make you think, oh, well, you know, the album artwork's cool. Maybe the music's cool, um, <laughs> as was the intention in the 80s. So um, same, same theory as what they were doing, you know, 40 years ago. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, in the music video for Love Languages, there's also a night featured. I'm interested, where was that music video shot? It was shot here in Brizzy. Um, so we we shot our performance portion of it at Sunshine Castle in Bly Bly, which is up the sunny coast. Really cool sandstone castle. Um, wicked place. Go visit it if you're in the area but then we spoke to a local his name's mario and he does something that's called boo hurt which is basically like laughing meets mma so he does proper medieval combat competitively um and and he was super keen he's also a musician and he was like yeah would love to do a video and uh so we shot it around the norman park area because I, I worked in a bottle shop there at the time and it was just, I could twist the manager's arm and, you know, uh, get what we needed over there. So, yeah, it's wicked fun. So is he the one in the night costume? Mario was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. I love yeah, that. Because he's, like, he, he's dead serious about it. You know, that's his helmet. Um, and I think he borrowed some armour from a friend of his because his was, like, rusty or something. But um, it's like... Like legit armor that he fights in competitively which is like so cool that's amazing yeah i have mad respect for laughers and cosplayers who make their own costume it's good enough that it actually holds up throughout the day like it doesn't just fall apart as you're moving yeah, in like it he's wearing actual fucking steel plate like it's crazy like we watched him put it on and it took him like half an hour to put the suit on it's crazy real yeah. armor. Believe it. Yeah. yeah i know the music videos a little bit kitchen and a little bit kind of out there. You guys are in a castle, you're playing music, and then you've got this night breaking into like a bottle shop. Um, what? Tell us a little bit about the message of the song, though. Um, yes, the, the video has nothing to do with the actual song. Um, but the song itself is kind of like, um, I don't know if you ever heard a band called Basement, but they did an album called Color Me and Kindness, and... There was always this really clever thing he did lyrically where he'd be super vulnerable, but he'd be a bit of a dick and like a little bit narcissistic, but he'd really wear it on his sleeve and he'd kind of take ownership of it. 
And I always thought that was kind of cool because most of the time you listen to like an emo song and we're all blaming everyone else for our problems. And I think it was kind of cool with that Basement album. They were kind of looking inward a little bit. And um, I kind of took inspiration from that lyrically and just kind of wanted to like wear some of my shitty habits and behaviors and communication styles a bit more openly and just be a bit more realistic about it because it's not everyone else's fault if I get antsy. You know, um, there's a there's a common denominator there. So, um, yeah, it's just a bit of introspection that kind of came from that place of influence. Yeah, cool. And is that where the title comes from as well? Because, you know, they say there's, what is it, like five love languages and everyone mm. kind of gravitates towards one. What What's your love language? It remains a mystery. Um, you see, like my, my wife is a gift giver, you know, through and through. That's her. That's her thing. Um, you know, my, my parents, their words of affirmation, they're very much about like telling you, you know, things, um, and that's their way of communicating how they, how they love. And I have no idea what mine is. I think it might be quality time. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like it's kind of been a mystery to me what mine is. And so that's kind of stimulus for the song that goes with a kind of, cliche societal thing that we can like kind of put together and go like well okay here's a pretty direct and literal story but then here's also this kind of broader more abstract thing that's going to be relatable and recognizable to a you know hopefully broader audience yeah I love that um I love that people can kind of no matter what their love language is I guess they can kind of understand the lyrics of the song a little bit in their own way yeah, because I'm sure you've all, I'm sure we've all met someone who we can't quite read or can't quite like break the walls down with them. And we're probably not actively thinking, oh, we should find out what their love language is. But like, you know, musically, it just kind of brings up that that barrier system in a way that it kind of sounds fun through words. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, do you have a favorite track from the upcoming album, either released or not yet released, or will be released soon. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, I really love a song we have called Lake Aragon. It's about us going camping, and it's the best. Um, Lake Aragon's a spot down near Broomshead, close to Grafton, McLean area, best campsite in the world. And whenever I feel down. Um, we'll we'll go out to Lake Aragon and kind of reset, chill out, get away from the city. Um, it's very cathartic, and the song is like heaps of fun, super upbeat. That's been creeping up as a favorite on the album for me. Yeah, so that was Lake Aragon, was it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody, you have to keep an eye out for that one and listen to it as soon as the album comes out tomorrow. Um, <laughs> your new album, I Feel It All At Once, describe its initial idea and its evolution to the finished product. The initial idea was basically, you know, do what we did right with album one and do it better. So self-produced both times, you know, and we, we wrote and built the whole thing together in our own space and and the intention was just to to do it better and then you know as a result I, th I think we did like we all learned heaps over the last couple of years we've all gone through a lot of personal development in that time um and and yeah it kind of speaks for itself that like everything we've experienced and learned since then uh has has informed kind of what we've done now and and it's we're stoked we absolutely love it we think it it's we're, we're so proud of it um and we didn't think we'd love it as much as we do but yeah we think it's great <laughs> yeah well I'm, I'm sure it is um can you describe your sound to people that might not have heard of semantics before and they might be tuning into this new album they might have just discovered you how does the sound of this album compare to your core sound? It's just, it's a very evolved version of our core sound. So it kind of, it draws on the sounds of, of everything we've done before, but it's all done with more intention, with more um, 
sure assuredness sureness i don't know what the word is for that more certainty mm -hmm. um and more confidence and so you know those sounds go from kind of cheesy dorky indie rock kind of punky songs um into some kind of almost metal metalcore leaning moments um right the way through to like heavy shoegaze doomy kind of sounds um throwing back to 80s classic rock kind of sounds it's basically like our love letter to guitar music from from like the late 70s to now like what do distorted guitars mean to us and what does that sound of loud rock music mean and you know across the whole kind of genre range and and this is what we interpret it as yeah so a bit of an evolution of semantics like the next step for you guys definitely. yeah and definitely like a more like glued in um and and confident version of it like we're not we're not playing with these ideas like we're leaning into them yeah yeah and your band is touring australia very soon what are you most looking forward to about touring month off work i think we're all pretty keen on that um but but honestly yeah it'll just be that spending time together catching up with all of our friends from interstate that we don't get to see you know too often um whether that's you know friends through our personal lives or whether that's you know friends in the music scene or it's fans or uh, whoever it is we're just really really keen to just get out and see everyone we've been in our shells being hermits for the last two years so we're really really excited to yeah just get out and see everyone again definitely you've got so many dates lined up both just um in a city and also regional dates even it's going to be a huge tour for you guys yeah it'll be it'll be the biggest one that we've taken on so far um which we, we can't wait for there's a couple of places we've never played before um so yeah it's all super exciting yeah that's sick um are you ready for amplify rapid fire a little sip of whiskey yeah <laughs> gotta ready yourself I'm all ready. right let's go we have callum from semantics doing rapid fire with amplify so callum what is your favorite album or song oh fuck um um, um, on Letting Go, Circus Survive is my favorite album. Favorite song is I'm Not Okay, My Chemical Romance. Classics. And what about your favorite artist? Music artist? How about any? Just let's throw it out there. Oh, geez. Um, music artist, all time, probably Circus Survive, Anthony Green, just magician um visual painterly style i'll go frank brazetta mm, beautiful and your favorite movie lord of the rings always and do you have a favorite place to visit lake arrogan and what about your favorite venue to play oh favorite venue to play ooh, 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 ooh. you know what we've loved every venue we've ever played in adelaide but jive bar in adelaide is the best awesome all right you heard it here adelaide um jive bar going for you guys <laughs> yeah, thank <brilliant>. you <laughs> so much for your time today callum